told the manager, the manager called Fred, Fred called me, I went, called the cops. That was it. The cops brought it back. <laughs> Did they charge him? No, I did not press charges, but I don't know what the military did to him. He's a military guy. Yeah, it was on, on base. They had to take him on base. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't worth the, the embarrassment. The I'm ready. We're ready. And action. Hello, everyone. I meet the most interesting people sitting right here at Angelina's Pizza. I talk to the rock stars, the heroes, and the gods. It's what I do. And tonight, it's a beautiful night in downtown Key West. I've got this fine gentleman here with me. If you would tell everyone your name and where you're from. Everybody wants to sit with Kit. Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Jay Graham. I live in Key West, but I'm from Philadelphia. You are from Philadelphia? Yes, really? Yes. Wow, you're Surfside Vodka? Yes, I have from my Philadelphia. Surfside. Do you like tasty cakes too? I love tasty cakes and salt pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have the salt pretzels as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny because Philly brings a certain thing, don't they? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. You know, everybody from Philly, you may not realize it initially, but there's certain things that they do and they want that you just can't can't get away from Philly. They are passionate, and they and are. I passionate. see it down here with the Philly people that come down to visit, uh, watching football, watching baseball. Right. I mean, they just they're crazy. They're they're. They give, they give fanatics, they, there's a reason they call them fans. It's a yes. derivative of fanatic. Yes. They and they are. are the fanatics. They're not the fans. They're the fanatics. I mean, I love where I'm from. Yeah. It, it was kind of refreshing to get away from it because they're too crazy, too off the hook. I, I, I'm sure. And I, I've, been, I've been like that too, but once I hit a certain age, I'm like, I can't do this uh, anymore. Time to just chill it. out. Yeah. So, you're from Philly. How long have you been in Key West? So I arrived in April, April 15th, 2008. 2008. So coming on like six, 16 year anniversary. Good Lord, it's been that long? Feels like yesterday though, doesn't it? Ah, man. Yeah, hanging out at Rumors with you and tree the bar. gecko, the tree bar. Yeah. Uh -oh. Feels like yesterday. It, it, it does. really does. Yeah, it's it time flies. And it's the best th time of my life though, living down here. And what are you doing now here? So I work at Mary Ellen's Mary four Ellen. days a week. Yep. Uh, love that. Great local bar. And I do um, Sunset Tiki Bar at the Galleon uh, every other Thursday, which is nice and refreshing. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, can you ask for a better? Can't. I, <laughs> I can't. mean, you're right on the Gulf of oh, freaking Mexico. It's so beautiful. That is a gorgeous spot. Yeah. Who's running that place nowadays? That's Phil. Phil is it Cook. still Phil? Yep. Mm -hmm. Good for him. Phil I haven't Kelly. seen him in a while. Uh, he's Either great. one of them. He, he's a breath of fresh air. I haven't every seen time I see him, I just smile. That's awesome. Yeah. So. And here's something else. I don't know if you still do this or not, but we're coming up on April 15th, which you brought up a while ago. Are you still doing? Yes, taxes. You, you are. You're you're yeah. an accountant. Yeah, I. Uh, that dropped out. I did that in a previous life, and yeah. I figured I might as well do a side hustle down here. So I, uh, I do a lot of bartenders, servers, yeah, musicians. I, I'm sure you do. And and it's great. It's great to be able to help them because they're lost. They're like, right. You, know, you don't come out of the womb knowing how to do taxes. So no. these people and and it's. It's intimidating. The IRS is intimidating. Yeah, they are. And, I, you know, I tell everybody when they say something about opening a business, I tell them, get a good accountant and know a lawyer. Yes. That's all you need. Yes. And then you just let your passion for whatever it is you want to do run wild and let your accountant handle that end of it. If you ever get and in trouble. And let them guide you. Let them guide you. Yeah, absolutely. Get their advice before you open up. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of opening up blind get and then, you know, uh, making mistakes in the beginning where you can they can all be avoided yeah yeah, yeah th th that's that's huge it really is because it's what it all comes down to is we don't we don't talk about finances no we don't learn that in school i wish they would and they uh, and like i don't know an why. economics class they just don't do it you know just your basic checks and balance how to balance your damn checkbook well or, or just Basic knowledge of taxes. Just, just basic knowledge. Just understanding how it works. Yeah. But it's like smoke and mirrors and hoodoo and they don't want to tell you. I don't get it. But anyway, that's your side hustle. Yeah, that's my side hustle. So Mary Ellen's four days a week, Tiki a couple days. I bought a house down here a couple years ago. Did you? Yeah, I love it. Nice. Um, I figured, you know, watching the climate at Key West. Yeah. And the rents, how crazy they got. Out of control. And these people, so many people I've known had to leave the island. That, but to me, it's, it's no excuse because all the time they've been here for so long, they should have bought a house. Yep, absolutely. It's one of the first things I tell everybody that moves here. I'm like, buy a house, try to buy a house. 
now I don't know how obtainable it is. I don't I don't think it is for a lot of people yeah, anymore. I don't think it is anymore either, but that used to be the first thing I'd tell everybody, you know, buy a house, buy a house, save your money, buy a house, because it used to be you could do it. Yeah. But now the between the banking laws and the and the prices the it's interest rate. It's, it's a insane. little bit nuts. I see I, I tell people if you're gonna buy a house, you're gonna have to bring in a roommate or two. You yeah. know, I have a three bedroom. So you, know, yeah. you can have two roommates and help you help you so afford what? that expense. So what? Let me ask you this. Is your is your mortgage less than your rent would have been? Are you at that point? No. No, not yet. No. But I don't even live in my house. I rent it out. <laughs> you, you you rent a whole thing out. I rent it out. Yeah. And, and you live somewhere else. Yes. Which I find just crazy. But well, I mean, that's the most cost-effective way for me to do it. Yeah. And you know, I and once once you cross that line where your mortgage is less than rent, then you'll move in. Right. Exactly. And, and that's that's years down the road. But right now, it works for me. It you took know, me, it pays for itself. It took me like I think right out a year. I would own my house right out a year. And all of a sudden, a three-two of the pool, the rent was more than my mortgage payment. And I remember jumping up and down in my kitchen one Sunday morning, all excited. Like, yes, I've made it. I made it because I mean that's a huge deal. It is a big deal. Well, to get to that point where your rent is is more than your mortgage, you're you're home free. Exactly. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. that's cool. So I. I I'm a little upset that it took me that long to do it. Yeah, it I, took me 13 years. Yeah, that was too long. But I, I, man, I partied my face off for the first 10 years I was here. You saw wow. me. I was a nutbag. Well, we all, minds. we all did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was the greatest days I don't remember. Oh, uh, that was yeah. awesome. Fantastic. I kind of, I, I, I miss them in a way, and I don't miss them in a way. I, exactly. I haven't drank in seven years. Right. I'm seven years sober. And it's, it didn't start off as a bet or a dare. I just decided. You know, I remember I was at the Gecko back then. Yeah. You would come in and just drink club soda. Yeah. No more Bud Lights. Yeah. No more Bud Lights. No more shots. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like. But and I thought I'd do it for three or four months or maybe a year. And here I am, seven years and two months later. But who's counting? You look great. <laughs> you, know? you look great. You know, hey, I'll put it this way. It, it probably increased my longevity yeah. of being here. Because Duval Street's hard. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, especially I mean, you just be bopped around. It, not it's that hard. Not even crazy, but a drink here, a drink there. Oh drink yeah. There. I mean, you're right in the thick of it. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It was ten drinks a day, mm -hmm. just going to five bars. Saying hello to your friends. Just saying hi. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, did we have fun. Yeah, we that was did. some good times. Yeah. The, the back of the gecko is probably one of my favorite. Man, that, when that place closed down, that I think a piece of a lot of. A lot of people's hearts died with that. It, it, it really did. Yeah. It really did. I mean, a lot of people talk about the old hideaway. The hideaway was one of those places. You know, every every ten years there's a place <clears throat> that everybody kind of homes in. To. Yeah, and it's it's just kind of that. Yeah, you know, that was a place where you didn't have to go with anybody. You just showed up there, and, and right. your friends were there already. Right. So it, you know, that was that's the only drawback is it was a Boston bar, and that was a bit obnoxious. Well, that, yeah, they are obnoxious. You know, <laughs> they're worse than Philly by far. Philly's I, just idiots, but Boston was just obnoxious. Well, I think with Boston people, it's their their, their general lifestyle. Yeah, is that what Philly it is? Philly people, it's it's during the games, they're they're out of their minds. <laughs> yes, people, they are. Yep, these you're people correct. in Boston, they're they're like that 24/7. All right, so you want to smile for Harris. The, Jeff Harris? Hi, Jeff. Hi. Yeah. 24/7. They are. They're on, boy. That's it's nuts. But hey, they're proud of it, though. They are proud of it. They I are proud of it. Hey, uh, something else I want to talk to you about. I watched a little short of you. I watched this short movie the other day. From. Um the Key West Music, uh, the Key West, um, Key West Film Society or whatever. Yes. I played a gay guy. You played a gay guy. I played a gay Mike Zielinski <laughs> put that on for Mr. Z's, yes. Mr. Z's Mike wrote a play. Yes. You were the gay, it was a, uh, shit, I watched the whole thing. I forget now what all it was, but. Do you know I've never seen it in its entirety, and I remember like oh, really? I had to be in bed with another guy, <laughs> and I was just like, "This is really awkward." This is, and I said, "All the fucked up things I've done in my life." I'm like, "I, I got to be in bed with a dude." Like, <laughs> I that, looked at Mike, that, and that 
was just about that that had to push your limits it, it really did and, and that was me, great i've danced on bars with my balls out and, and yeah. pants down and, yeah but never with another guy right yeah, yeah. <laughs> until <It's> then a, <laughs> it was <But>, eye-opening <laughs> but it wasn't anything shocking no other no. than just the fact you had to he wanted us to share a kiss. I said, absolutely not. I nope. am not. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. And nothing against that lifestyle. No. Nope. It, it just didn't, yeah, didn't tickle well, my fancy. I was just amazed at how well of a job you did. I, it's nerve wracking. Acting is not an easy thing. People look at it and they go, right. well, man, I was nervous. And who was your? Who all was in that? There was a. I don't remember the people. There was a lawyer. A little short lawyer. Um, a little lesbian lady, Mike Z, I think he was... He was the cop or something. He yeah, was the he sheriff. chasing down somebody. Yeah. Um, yeah, on the beach. On the beach. beach. Yes. Yeah. I, I remember filming. The first day of filming, I'm shaking. Like, what the fuck am I shaking for? I put on a show every day at work. You know, Absolutely. but I'm not technical. Well, I'm not on camera in my face. I'm on camera. And that's come back to bite me in the ass, too. Like, Jay, come on, you're working. You can't pull your balls out. But, but well, you know, it happens. It happens. I get, I get caught up in the moment. Yeah, you know. I, <laughs> and it's all, a lot of what I do is comedic. Sure. Especially when I'm working. I'm sober when I work. Right. So it's not like I'm a drunken mess. I don't drink when I work. But you know, you are you are a bit of a you are part of the entertainment. That's exactly. You know, I mean, if you're not engaging in some facet, why are they going to stay? I just or why are they going to come back? I just had a conversation with Chris Schultz the other day. With who? Chris Schultz. He okay, owns Marriott. Okay. Yep. And I guess <laughs> whatever I was saying a couple weeks ago, but the people ordered picklebacks, which is Jameson followed by a. Uh, uh, pickle yeah. juice. Yeah. And I said, did you ever have our pickle juice? I'm, I'm having a conversation with them. And they're like, I said, it's the best pickle juice you'll ever have in your life. And they're like, what makes it so good? I'm like, well, I, I, I dip my balls in it. <laughs> well, and these people are looking at me. It's what? Well, I, you know, I forget that other people hear my conversation. Because... I, I'm, I'm, oh, when I'm yeah. having a conversation with somebody, I'm thinking, can I get away with this joke? Can I? So I, it's all going through my mind. But what I'm not thinking about, <laughs> this old lady over here the knows just, my boss. All of a sudden, here telling him he dips his balls in pickle juice. <laughs> so he's like, Jay, you gotta watch who's listening to you. And I'm like, but yeah, you know, you're then right. on the other hand, I mean, it's a lot of space. get a fucking sense of humor. I, you know, I, I if know. you're gonna if you're gonna hear the back end of a conversation. Don't go telling anybody that you something definitive. Oh, you know what he does? That drives Don't drink me crazy. the pickle juice there. You know, it's like you're an idiot. <laughs> well, you know, it's just like you know how many people act like they're peeing in this fountain behind the pizza shop, and they're not. Every night, I used to tell people, go, if you had a quarter for every guy, would you be rich? And I go, yeah. If I had a nickel for every woman I've seen doing it, I'd be rich. Yeah. But. They're not really PM, but you know how, at least once every four or five years, and I'm a, some ne'er do well, do gooder, will call the Department of Natural Resources on us and say, they've got these live turtles and people are peeing in there. And it's like, lady, are you really that effing ignorant? Yep. Are you really that dumb that you cannot see that there's a fountain squirting in there and they're faking it? But, you know, it happens. It happens. When I worked at Captain Tony's, funny story. Oh, yeah. I had this lady come in, and they had this fake skeleton behind the bar. And yeah. they had the whole spiel about, you know, yeah. people were buried there. But whether it's true or not, that's besides the point. What was it She more? calls the police. Yeah. Because we have a skeleton, and that's um, yeah. a desecration of a dead a corpse right. or whatever yeah. the hell it is. Yeah, yeah. The police come in, and <laughs> I look at this lady. I'm like, are you Bye, out mom. of your mind? Hold on. Bye, Mom. Oh, jeez. Jay Graham, you want to say hi real quick? I did it. One celebrity telling another celebrity hi. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah so, I've been here in a long time. She, yeah, well, if you've been here any time, you know mom. Yeah, Terry you know, Craney. Terry, Terry. So, yeah, Captain Tony is notorious for having that skeleton. Yeah. Is it still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's just there again. That's people not taking the time to do the research. It's a talking and, point. That's all it is. It's a, Absolutely. It, 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 it piques people's imagination of yeah. what this place was. Or, and if you, you know. don't have enough of a sense of humor to understand it, you really need to travel more. Yeah. You need yeah. to get out a lot more. 
because you've been home a little too long. And a lot of times, don't be so gullible. Don't be so gullible. Yo, would you really, would you really believe Shay's dipping his balls in the pickle juice? Oh, yeah. past, you know, ten years ago, possibly. You know, I, I was going to say I probably would have been there with you doing that about ten or twelve years ago. Yes. But un unfortunately, we, you know, we would have not probably let anybody else drink it. We, you know, you know I, I've actually watched somebody do that. Yeah. Uh, behind the bar, my buddy, when I first moved here, the Fogarty's crew had a hell of a crew back. Oh yeah. In the, in the late uh, 2008, 2009, 2010. Right. And, uh, you know, they mostly basically fucked with each other. Yeah. So uh, the one guy, Kyle, dips his balls in a drink and the other bartender drank it behind yeah. the bar. And yeah. I'm like, you, you people are insane. And that's yeah. why I fit right in here. <laughs> I fit right in here. It was great. Hey, and you know what? Don't even get started on the other end of town of some of the things I've <laughs> oh, seen man. down there. You know, because I did it. I, yeah, well, yeah. I ended up in the back room at 801 yeah. with a girl. Yeah. A girl I picked up right in this bar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. up, we, we were doing a bar crawl from um, yep. uh, where I work, Rum Barrel. I was brand new in town, maybe a year. And uh, so we did a bar crawl from the Rum Barrel, walking up to Wall Street. We stop in Rick's Down. Yep. There's this cougar in there. Mini skirt, gorgeous. Probably about 45 years old. I'm about 32 at the time. Yep. She's got a, a tube top, I guess that's what it's called, and, and, and a jean skirt on. Within 30 seconds, I have her tits out, blah, 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 we're having fun, I'm playing with them. I don't know how this happens. Um, the magic of Jay Graham. Then, then we start, you know, I, you know, we bring her along with the bar crawl, we end up, I end up with her in the back room at 801. Yeah. And there's a gay couple back there, and then there's us. The number one saloon? Yeah, is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah. We just found it. There was yeah. a gay couple back there and us. Yeah. And things got a little <laughs> frisky. <laughs> it, it was, it was, I'm high five the one guy. It was hilarious. Yeah. But this is my life. All yeah. Right. And you great. knew you were home right then I and there. Was, <laughs> yeah. In the back room of a gay bar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know, nothing for nothing, but the number one saloon used to be where Virgilio's, how the Virgilio's is across yeah. from Mary Ellen's. Yeah. It ran all the way up to the plate glass window, all the way up to Duval Street. But you entered from the side door, and it was the window was all blacked out. You couldn't see in there. But that was where the number one saloon was when I moved here, and it was a, a very, very dark gay bar. And I used to, I used to go there with dates with girlfriends all the time. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say all the time, but I probably went in there a half dozen times or more. I, I have no problem with it. <laughs> None whatsoever. And usually they didn't have a problem with me being in there with a girl no. either. At all. No. In fact, it was it was often kind of funny. I used to... I, I had this, Someone's going to hit on her. <laughs> well, I used to tell this one... I, this was kind of my line. This was really bad to say, but back when I was young and broke, I used to say, hey, you want let's go get some free drinks? I know we can get some free drinks. Let's go to the number one saloon because they'll, they'll buy you and me both a round of drinks. <laughs> yeah, <they will. laughs> and it was, it, was, it was true. And I don't mean that bad, but... You know, I didn't have any money, yeah. <laughs> but we would go in there, and next thing you know, we'd have a couple drinks. And after two, I'd always go, "Hey, honey, we gotta go. We can't, we can't stay any longer than two drinks. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> we're start we're to, limited people out. People start to have expectations. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we gotta go. I gotta go to work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it was funny. Boy, the things we used to get away with. And you know what? I think the kids are still getting away with some of these things. Not down so. here. I don't, I don't think know. so. It I got too corporate. It got very corporate down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've watched the changes in, in only the, the 15 plus years I've been here. You know, the, the crowds. It's more of a 10 o'clock at night. These people that come down here, they're in bed. Yeah. Because these young kids that, that that used to be us, right. that were able to come down here right. and do this, they can't afford to come down they here. They can't anymore. afford to be here. The other thing I kind of think is a truism is it used to be that all the servers rode their bikes home. And they'd go out and get just blasted after work and then ride their bike home. But there's no homes for them to ride their bike to anymore. Now they have to drive up to Stock Island or Big Pine or Bay Point. Or yeah. They're all having to drive 20, 30 miles. So they're not drinking and they're not well, partying. water down the local crowd hanging out. Yeah, yeah. The, there's no local crowd anymore because it's all, it's all gentrified with uh, Airbnb um, and that are home by 10. So it, it's it's complexions changed quite a bit. I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see. Who knows? I have a feeling it's not just here. I think it's all of any kind of resort area near the ocean, and I, I mean all over the country. Yeah, it's a worldwide phenomenon. 
the, it's uh, not just here. The real estate, the real estate got so expensive yep. anywhere near the coast. Yep. And a, a warm area, and and it, it's you're losing that local local feel. Yeah, you are because everybody wants to buy a piece of it and rent it out for a million dollars and make back their their bank and you know. Which I, I, I mean, I can't say I blame them, but it just it just well, rips the fabric I, of the community up. I, I think there's Lizzie, there's my work wife, and Lizzie is. Sweeney. Uh, Golden smooth. <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> Nothing. So, yeah. So I, I think a lot of it is uh, people, you know, during COVID, everything yeah. got shut down, and the yeah, whole country did. was coming to the United States. Yep. So these people are like rushing to buy these yep. um, overpriced. They want a uh, monthly rentals. Yep. And Everybody. Did. I, and, I, and I said to oh. a couple people that own real estate, I said, "This is going to end. You know, it's going to end. Yeah. When the whole country opens up, yeah. you know." People are going to go elsewhere. They're not forced to come to Florida, I, and, and it ended. And now they're they're trying to get their locals back. Yeah, I, and that's what I kind of think too. I, <clears throat> I think I think it's not going to turn quickly, but it's going to turn around somewhat slowly. Yeah, because you know, like you know, I'm a landlord, and I don't have anything that is weekly. Right. You know, I refuse to go down that route. I can make a lot more money. Sure. But it's not about the money for me. I'm a land. I, I own real estate for the long term, and to provide housing for people. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to break the bank and and make it all back in a, in a year. You can't. I'm not trying to do that. You know, I will. You know, every, everywhere I have real estate, I have service industry people living in those units, and that's what Which I is want. Great. Thank you. I, I you know, that's what that. I want. You know, so uh, that's who lives in my house. Three, three service industry people. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I want to give them a, a, an affordable place. Absolutely. That where I, you know, pays for my place, and I make a little bit on, you know. Right. Well, you, I, at, I don't at, make a fortune off them, but no, I make but a little bit. No, but at the end, at the end of it all, whenever you go to to sell the property. After all the taxes you've paid and all the insurance. interest you've paid insurance. and all the insurance you've paid, you'll walk away with a few dimes, but you won't walk away with as much as everybody thinks. No. no. You know, everybody thinks, oh, you make all this money, but shit, I just paid property taxes today, eleven thousand dollars. I paid I paid sixteen thousand dollars worth of taxes on five parcels of land. You know, in Key West. Well yeah, it's about right because you know, my one property, my uh, my property taxes are just over four thousand. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and that's not including insurance. Over sixteen thousand dollars that I paid that day. And I always used to laugh. I go, I don't have any kids. I, 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 I the one, my son Zach, who was Valerie's I kid. I love Zach. Um, I, I then ended up paying for him to go to private school. Plus, I paid a shitload of taxes for for school. I'm like, I'm getting screwed coming and double going. Double dip. They double dipped it. <laughs> yeah. Why, why don't I get a re why don't I get a refund on some of this? Nah, but, you know, they're never going to give the money back to you. No, they're not, and rarely do they ever lower the rates. No. That we rarely ever see. Hey, one other thing I want to ask you about: you're wearing a hat. What's the significance of that hat? It was. It's Avid. It's. I, I guess it's a. Um, this is. It's not even a local company. Normally, I wear the the hook with the yeah. uh, martini glass. Yeah, you, you the, Coast Up, Coast Up Charters. Coast that's up Charters Scotty. Scotty. Yes. That's why I was wondering when I, I saw that. I'm like, well, what's normally up I would wear that hat with this outfit. It's funny <laughs> that you asked that. But I, uh, I, I got it. It gets so hot. Yeah. And I, so I wear it so much. The last time I wore it, I could smell the sweat on it. So I'm like, I got to clean the hat before I wear it again. Hey, Scotty, he needs a new hat. I need, yeah, Scotty, <laughs> Walter, I need a hat. Hey, Walter. So, um, <laughs> So it's it's so funny that you said that. I'm like, well, I gotta wear this hat now because uh, the other one. I, when I'm wearing it and I can smell it on me, I'm like, time to time to wash it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I used to wear hats a lot, but I, I ride a motorcycle and that's kind of doesn't work. No, no. So I, I gave up hats years ago. Do you know I, I was wearing another one of Walter's hats, uh, and I was I was coming up on the Palm Avenue Bridge coming downtown, and I was wearing the hat. And a gust hit me. Uh, I was coming up, so my, I guess it got under me. Yeah. And it flew Boom. off, and I looked, and it was right in the middle. And I swear the person behind me swerved to run it the fuck over. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And it was brand new. Now it has a big crease in it. And I'm like, you you could have avoided it. That's when you just get the biggest loogie and just right on their windshield. I didn't know what to do. I was just like, oh, are you man. kidding me? You couldn't have avoided that. Hey, you know what? Today... A tourist couple going down Flagler. I'm going out to B of A. Her straw hat blows off, and I went around it, and like the three cars behind me all 
they saw me go around it and they all went around it and I, the girl pulls over she comes around back I'm like well great you know her straw hat does have a bunch of tread marks on it, which, <laughs> yes. which is, you know, sweet of everybody to do. Yes. Because they could have all just blasted it. Well, that's what this person did. Yeah. I was like, oh, motherfucker. God that, damn it. That Jay Graham will get <laughs> We'll get it. Yeah. It was payback yeah. for something I thought. Yeah. I'm sure it was. <laughs> yes. So, across the street, one of Chris's places is going to come across the street. The old gecko is going to gecko. come back. I've, I haven't seen it yet. The Tiki House. Tiki yes. House is moving in there. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I've talked to him about it, and he's, he's giving me snippets of what they're going to do. Apparently, it's it's just going to be this awesome islandy oasis, you know, I'm sure place. Chris was an idea guy. Well, and, and he's not going to skimp on it either. No. Uh, he's going to go all out on it. Yeah. And, and you know, right. it, it's going to be amazing. I, I want to sneak in there one of these days and just check out to see the progress of it. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to I, see, I see the lights on, but I can't see in. Yeah. But I, the rumor is somewhere in April, maybe the end of April. I'm hoping. I mean, it's Key West. You know, but I mean, it, oh, this, hey, you know, who knows? Well, Chris is. Chris isn't one to hear excuses of why shit's not getting done. Uh, so, no. you know, he's, he's going to be on top of them. Like, I'm sure he is. Right up their ass every day. Well, why I, isn't this getting done? I can done? tell you that I don't know him very well. He very rarely ever says hi to me, and that's nothing personal. You know, he's a busy guy. But the one time I talked to him for about one minute was after a, a little unfortunate incident at Red's, um, at uh, what's Red's place? Uh, General Horseplay. Okay. At General Horseplay, there was a little upstairs electrical the fire. fire. Yes. And I saw him out there for a couple of days, busting his ass to get that place. He was there every day working. I know. I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I respect that. I, I went by there every day, and I would see him out there, and I talked to him for just a brief minute one day. You know, and that was when I said, all right, you know, this guy's a hustler. You know, he's, he's not afraid to, to get in there and mix it up. Well, I'll tell you what. To his credit, he's not afraid to do the work. Nope. And to get it done, yep. he has to be there. Because yep. if he's not there, yeah. they're not going to get it done as quickly. Yeah. And he yep. wanted to get reopened. Right. I mean, it, well, it, I know Andre was in there. Yeah. I mean, everybody was there. They were they were doing it, which was awesome. You know, it was great. It was great to see everybody working so hard. Yeah. So, anyway, what else you got there, Jay Graham? Tax season's coming up. Tax season is here. Yeah, uh, it is. That's what I did all day today. Did you? Yeah, but I knocked out about eight tax returns today, did you really? so which is good. And I had a late start. Um, <laughs> that's self-inflicted. That's all right. <laughs> um, so I got that done. Um, I'm, I'm actually looking to uh, buy another property. Are uh, you really? Well, I, my goal is to have two more properties by the end of this year. End of this year? Are yeah. they going to be in Key West? No. I have a formula. So I watched the podcast a couple days ago about real estate investing. And I'm, I, you can always learn something. You know, I'm, I'm not that I'm anywhere near a, uh, a savvy real estate investor, but you know, I have my, my plans and